The latest Federal Reserve data shows credit card debt is at a record high. But many say the burden of student debt is preventing them from doing just that. A record number of millennials and Gen Z are struggling with car payments and defaulting on car loans. Have you ever wondered why most Americans have debt? Why so many people are poor? Well, if you're like me, you've probably spent almost your entire childhood growing up in school, maybe most of your teen years too. Yet for some reason, the conversation of money just never seems to come up, even at home with your family. You just drift through most of high school learning about calculus and photosynthesis, and then right towards the end, you need to decide on a college and make probably one of the biggest financial decisions of your life. If you choose to go, there's a good chance you'll be taking on somewhere between $30,000 and $100,000 worth of student loans. You'll probably lease or finance a car during this time and maybe even open up a credit card. You figure during these next four years, they would prepare you on how to pay this off since it wasn't brought up in high school. Yet again, you're left disappointed and pushed out into the real world with no real directive. Just a piece of paper and a promise from your parents that all you needed to do was go to college, get a good job, and all your financial burdens would disappear. You never end up learning actually about money or credit cards or how to even file your taxes. So why is it that talking about money is so taboo? Like, why is it that parents, high schools, and even colleges don't teach you about financial education? Especially in a world where the second you turn 18, you start getting targeted for credit card offers in the mail, car loans, and even student loans. Why is it that Americans have one trillion in credit card debt, or that 44% of Americans don't have enough cash to cover a $400 emergency, or that half of Americans live paycheck to paycheck? Why are we never taught about financial education? Well, when you really start to dig into this, you're gonna begin to uncover some really scary things. You see, most Americans tend to think it's the parents who are most responsible for teaching us about finance. Yet, even when our society thinks this, only a minority of families actually talk about it. I mean, who could blame them though? Gen X has the highest generational debt compared to all other generations. How can they teach their children things they don't even know the answers to? And by the way, these are people born between 1965 to 1980. Gen Xers have racked up $36,000 in personal debt, and that's excluding a mortgage. So it makes sense they can't teach their children about smart financial decisions and to stay out of debt when they can't even do it themselves. Their only advice is to teach what their parents taught them or do what they couldn't. Just go to school, get a degree, and get a good job. You'd figure if your parents lack the knowledge to teach you, then you should be able to learn it in school, right? wrong. You see, the problem with public schools is it's run by the state, which lacks modernization to keep up with the ever-changing financial system or just the want to teach it. But even then, they should at least be able to teach the basic fundamentals of financial education, like setting up a retirement or how to build your credit score. But they just don't. Some people truly believe there is a more sinister, greedy reason as to why there's no financial education in public schools. I mean, think about it. The state makes the public curriculum, and it's the state you usually take massive loans from to go to college. So why would the state teach you about financial responsibility right before you take out a $30,000 student loan? Especially when these specific loans never go away until they're paid. Unlike other forms of debt, like car loans or mortgage loans, student loans usually can't be resolved during bankruptcy, which means they are here for life. And the more debt owed means higher interest payments owed to the state, to banks, and even those large corporations. We'd be making $23 million a month in interest. The same corporations which also donate indirectly to the state's political campaigns. Ironic, right? These corporations themselves might not be able to donate directly, but their political action committees can. It's a lot easier for these corporations to steal your money when you don't know what to do with it. The more credit card debt you have, the more you'll have to pay back in interest. So in essence, the more they can convince you to buy a new car, the more money you'll spend. They don't want you to learn about buying a used car and how it might be a more affordable option. And it's those same companies like Tesla, Ford, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and so many more that are also donating to the state political campaigns and the people who make the educational decisions. Hopefully by now you're starting to see how the country is actually run. Students learn from teachers who are instructed by the state, who are paid by the major corporations. 
these corporations want your money. And let's also not forget about the fact that many teachers also lack the knowledge in financial education themselves. They were brought up learning the same things that their parents did. Just go to school, get a job, and all your financial problems will be solved. They too have fallen down the rabbit hole, riddled with debt and no idea how to budget. So if they don't know themselves, how on earth can they teach it? You guys remember the grossly flawed food pyramid they taught in public schools, right? Well, it was the food corporations that paid them to make that education. Most parents and teachers today are stuck in the rat race. They took their parents' advice, worked hard, got good grades, and got a good job. They were told to stay with that company for the rest of their life, and they will take care of you. In exchange, these companies will fund your pension for retirement and even give you benefits for your family. Doesn't sound too bad, right? Now, although this is true for their generation, that same advice unfortunately no longer applies to this one. In the past 50 years, the pension system, tax system, and even legal system have changed dramatically. Back then, as many as half of private sector workers were covered by a defined benefit plan in the mid-1980s. But by 2019, only 16% of private sector workers had access to them. Now in today's society, you're the one responsible for your retirement, which means you need to learn how to save, where to invest, and who you should trust with your money. And yet, public schools are still teaching you to go to college and take out loans. Schools would need to fix their previous mistakes and teach their current teachers how to be financially responsible if they want to see change. This is quite a difficult task to do when teachers are also paid very little and are getting their pensions literally stripped away. With our economy changing, getting good grades and going to college is just no longer enough. Decades ago, a high school diploma was enough to get you a good job, with many chances of moving up in your career. The price for public education back then was also free, which is surprisingly true today, although I'm not sure how much longer that will last. But unfortunately, those same jobs your parents or grandparents had now require a four-year degree to do the same thing. And why is that? Well, the diploma has always been a useful, inefficient tool for businesses. They use it to shorten the applicant pool in a cost-effective way at the expense of the student, which, as we said, can be upwards of $100,000. The problem is it just doesn't work that way anymore. Back in 1940, only 4.6% of Americans had a bachelor's degree, so I can understand the importance of using it as a screening device for businesses. But that rate rose to 15% by the 80s, 25% by the 2000s, and over 33% by 2016. This is simple, basic economics, supply and demand. The more there is of something, the less value it has. But it's not just the business's fault. The federal government is also to blame, as student loans have become much more financially obtainable than it ever was before. And since demand for a degree is through the roof, colleges also have incentive to raise their prices. Tuition at a private four-year college grew 250% from 1982 to 2012, while the median family income only rose by 18% during that time. And as for public colleges, tuition for a four-year degree rose 35% since the 2008 recession. As you can see, colleges themselves are great at business and making money. I mean, they even have a whole department for how to take out student loans. I would say they have quite the financial education, but the thing is, they'll never teach you it, as this would greatly threaten their overall plan. Like I said before, their goal is to sell loans to the millions of young people they brainwashed in high school into believing colleges would make them successful. The true goal of college is to mold you into the perfect employee for the companies that pay them, not so that you can be financially successful. Now, before I get labeled as an upper education hater, hear me out. There are plenty of career paths that need college degrees and get paid well. We still need engineers and we need programmers, but unfortunately for the overall majority of people that attend school, their degrees are in a field that are just no longer efficient. That honestly in this decade has most likely been replaced by automation or robots. With tech becoming so advanced, most major corporations are learning how to outsource their employees to foreign countries and also automate the process in-house. So no longer is there a need for someone to answer the phones in the US or even file paperwork. 
And if you do get a job in that field, it most likely is just minimum wage pay. So if you're watching this video and don't know what a W-2 is or a 1099 or even a Roth IRA, I think it's time to start educating yourself because as we know, the schools aren't going to do it.